Hello, welcome back to my haunted library. It's Regina. Hope everyone's doing well. Here is uh, my friend. One of my viewers commented a name suggestion for him as Duke Skeleton, which I thought was really funny, or maybe Sir Duke, I'll call him. But uh, yeah, just adding a few little things to my library. I don't know if you can see in the back. I feel like I moved things around because I was cleaning and now I'm, I'm a little off with the camera, but I'm not going to change it at this point. But you might be able to see I have some cobwebs in the background. There are probably a lot of cobwebs already. But I thought I would do just a quick kind of update today, what I've been doing. I can't believe the month of September is already over, or Vamptember. Uh, I had a very busy month. I was working back at the theater, putting on a really fun play, which has a Halloween theme. It's uh, The Mystery of Irma Vep, which is from the ridiculous theater company, Charles Ludlam, who was an incredible theater artist and whose uh, plays I really enjoyed when I lived in New York. I would, saw quite a few productions at that theater company. It's very campy and very fun. Yeah, so I've been working on that. So I've been very busy. And what else? I completely put my book on hold for another month because I just couldn't get in with so much working. I couldn't get in the headspace, but it's on track. You know, it's, it's, it's coming. I'd rather uh, take my time and finish it than put out something rushed. Uh, that's one thing I have learned. And the new bookworms is coming out next week. So I've been busy with that. Uh, despite requiring mail-in stories, I got a bunch. Not that I'm complaining. I just wish I could publish uh, you know, the majority of them because they're really good. It just, it was hard. I think I chose four and it was really hard to, to make that decision. And I feel bad. I feel bad sending out those little rejection emails because what can I say? The story is good. It's just that I'm trying to fit it together like a puzzle piece, like puzzle pieces. So if I have a longer story, I'm looking for a shorter story and this kind of balancing or different themes. There were a lot of stories that kind of dealt with um, like trick or treaters. So if I had too many of those, I wanted to balance it with something else. Anyway, the stories that I did choose, I feel are excellent. And I'm really excited about the new bookworms that's coming out. The first issue is completely sold out, so that's gone. We have quite a few of summer issues still left. If you want to pick that up, it doesn't just because it's not summer anymore doesn't mean you can't enjoy it. And of course, I hope that you will buy the next one coming out, which has a story by Cameron Cheney. And speaking of Cameron Cheney, I uh, put down the vampire books for a little while this month to read. Uh, Autumn Crow, what is it? Autumn Crow High, why can't I remember? Sorry, Cameron. Uh, hot off the presses. And what a gorgeous, gorgeous edition this is. I, I, of course, I had to buy the hardcover. It's really, really nice. This is the first um, Amazon, I, I'm assuming it's Amazon, that's where I bought it, a hardcover that I've seen. And it's really well done. And I, I have to give it to Cameron, he did an incredible job, not just on the story and the writing, but just the presentation of this. It's really, really impressive. Uh, we have Cameron Rubik's artwork, very iconic on the cover. Speaking of Cameron Rubik, I have to finish his book, the second book of Frankie Graves. I feel a little behind this stuff, but I stopped everything and took a couple days to read this. And it's really great. I'm, like I said, super impressed. My review I'm going to save though because it's in the new bookworms so maybe that will get you to uh, buy the new bookworms and like I said Cameron Cheney has a story an autumn crow world story in the new bookworms what he's one of the uh, contributors so please do check that out and also our uh, James and my bookworms podcast is pretty up to date if you want to check that out but yeah, definitely, I know a lot of people have already bought this and are reading it. It's getting great reviews, and I echo the praise. It's great. I just, you know, I'm going to hold off on saying what I think because the reviews out there in Bookworms, and then probably I'll do a separate review of this on my channel, but really, really loved it. And what else? I took myself on a little shopping trip last week. We have, I mean, I know I say I love gloomy weather, but this is even taking it to an extreme for me. So on my little shopping trip, which you can check out 
on my Patreon page. I don't mention that too much, but if you would like to be a patron, it would really help my channel a lot. It helps pay for, uh, well, the mostly my premiere subscription, which is like $50 a month. So uh, I think I have enough, I don't have a lot of patrons, but I'm, I'm grateful for every single one of them, but it pays about half of that. And that is very helpful. As you know, I don't advertise on my channel, although uh, YouTube runs ads anyway. I don't monetize and um, I don't plan to, but it is a way of supporting the channel. So if you'd like to become a patron, please do. Anyway, I, I, I just uploaded a few days ago a, my shopping trip vlog. Uh, on Patreon, I just do like, um, well, you get a free book every time I have a new release. And I don't post, I try to get post every week, but mostly I do vlogs, like informal stuff uh, out in the field, so to speak. So if that interests you, please check it out. I went to Barnes and Noble and I haven't done that for a while because I was mad at Barnes and Noble because they, oh, they charged me for a membership that I never signed up for. And it took me a while to get that off my credit card and I was not happy. So I boycotted it for a while, but then it, it pulled me back in because it's the only bookstore. I won't say only near me. I've got a lovely little independent bookstore near me and a few of those, but I mean like big bookstores. So I went in there, checked it out. The only thing I ended up buying, which I've been holding for like 10 minutes, is the new Scream magazine. And it's all about like old movies and stuff. And I love old movies like, I don't know, Dracula, Werewolf, The House That Dripped Blood, all these wonderful old like Hammer films that I've been into. So I haven't even read this yet, but I'm going to read it today. So I have gotten some reading done. I started reading Anno Dracula and it's a pretty long book and I'm only a hundred pages in. It's, I'm, let's say I don't like it or, or I like it. I'm not really sure yet. It's very gimmicky. There are a lot of like real life characters, like real people like Oscar Wilde, but then also fictional characters of like, of course, Dracula, who I haven't met, met yet, and Mr. Hyde or Dr. Jekyll rather, and all these different uh, characters. It's a little cheeky, which isn't really my style. Like it's not really, it's more like a fantasy, like kind of a steampunk fantasy detective story. Not really scary, but it's interesting and it's very well written. So I'm going to stick with it for now. But yeah, haven't gotten too far in that. And then uh, I'm just going to discuss some vamp, vampy movies I've been watching. But before I get there, I have a new package from Patrick. Happy Halloween. It's so nice to receive stuff in the mail. So give me a minute. So I just want to open this. All right. Okay, Patrick, you always outdo yourself with this. Oh my gosh. I'm almost embarrassed how many books he sent me. Ooh, look at this. This is like a handmade card with my name on it. Wow. I don't want to mess that up. It's so sweet. I know, I love October. This whole month, I'm savoring it. Look at that. Beautiful handwriting. Uh, Dear Regina, in honor of spooky season, I thought I would send you some fun spooky reads, which I know you and Batilda will enjoy. I hope you're enjoying the gorgeous fall weather at out, enjoying some good gothic literature. Yes, any traditional reads or film reviews coming up? Well, I do have some film reviews coming up in a minute. I'll be cuddling up with a bowl of popcorn and a double feature of The Haunting and Halloween, the original, very soon. Yeah, those are both great. Enjoy the books and happy Halloween. Sincerely, Patrick. Patrick, expect a reply from me very soon. It's very, very sweet. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, this is great. Agatha Christie's Halloween Party, a Perot story. I, if I read this one, it was a really long time ago. I, I did love Agatha Christie books when I was in high school, so it's been a while. I've been meaning to get back into her stuff. Oh, that's great. Oh, wow. Men, Women, and Chainsaws, Gender in the Modern Horror Film by Carol J. Clover. 
I actually have this book on audio and I've listened to some of it, but I didn't finish it. But yeah, this is great. This is a classic. Thank you. Really good stuff. And what is this? So this looks like a really beautiful book. This is V.E. Schwab Gallant. Mm. I don't know. This looks like a fantasy. Everything casts a shadow, even the world we live in. The shadows are not real. The dreams can never hurt you, and you will be safe as long as you stay away from Gallant. Am I pronouncing it? Is it Gallant or Gallant? I've heard it both ways. Well, wow, this... I have no idea what this is, like poems and illustrations and stuff. A children's book, perhaps. I will have to look into this, but it looks very intriguing. Wow, and beautiful, beautiful book. And what is this? <laughs> oh, well. Regina, I saw this journal and thought of you. I hope it proves useful in your writing. Now you'll have a pretty place to put all your ideas. Wow. <gasps> oh, Patrick, you have no idea. I just was... You're reading my mind. We're, we're, we're having clairvoyance because in my Patreon video vlog, I am looking through the journal section in uh, Barnes and Noble and thinking, do I get another journal? No, I won't. But then the universe sent me one because I didn't was like, no, I, I shouldn't spend the money on just another journal. And this is gorgeous. Look at this beautiful pin. This is, I mean, I'm kind of afraid to ruin it by writing in it. I shouldn't think that way. Have you ever done that? Had a really beautiful journal and then, uh, you know, you wrote something and you just felt like it was very like negative and you tore it out and then you had that like space. Anyone else? I won't do that with this one though, because I'll tell you why I have been working on some new poems. So I will use this as my poetry journal, like, you know, write down my poetry ideas and record my poems. So thanks again, Patrick. That was very, very generous. And I will definitely check out those books and use that journal as I am working through my new book of poetry. And these are all, again, like my first book of poetry, uh, Remembering the Dead. These are also, you know, just as morbid. <laughs> so I've been enjoying those. All right. So speaking of morbid, um, I watched some vampire films. So let's talk about them a little bit. The first one I've watched, and I, these were all on, you know, streaming or TV or whatever. I watched Dracula 2000, also known as Wes Craven Presents Dracula 2000. I guess Wes, Wes Craven produced it. I don't believe he directed it. Dracula 2000 builds upon Bram Stoker's original novel Dracula with Count Dracula res resurrected in contemporary America. The film was a critical and commercial failure, though two direct two video sequels, both written and directed by Lucier, were produced. So, no, it was directed by Patrick Lucier, Lucier, maybe. It starred Christopher Plummer, who, you know, handsome as ever, what can I say? And speaking of handsome, Johnny Lee Miller, he was always one of my crushes, you know, back in the, the train spotting days. Haven't seen him in too many movies. And, and Justine Waddell, uh, or Wadel. I'm not pronouncing names too well today. She was beautiful. So yeah, this was a, this was actually a fun movie. I, I can see kind of why it got panned, but just watching it as like a straight to video kind of movie, it was fun and entertaining. Uh, the, uh, the Dracula Gerald Butler, I didn't like so much. I remember when he was, um, Gerard Butler, sorry. I remember when he was like more of like a well-known actor. Like I said, this was a fun movie. I enjoyed just the atmosphere, the story I thought was pretty good. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in New Orleans. I thought the, it had kind of a, a fun twist on, um, uh, Dracula being, uh, part of the biblical story. I won't give away the twist. I don't think anyone really cares, but I was like, oh, that's different. So uh, Christopher Plummer plays Matthew Van Helsing, a descendant of Abraham Van Helsing, the original Van Helsing. And it, he has been keeping in this secret vault. Well, a bunch of thieves show up. They think it's, uh, you know, all kinds of filled with gold. And it's actually, of course, Dracula in a lead coffin. They steal him. He resurrects and wreaks all kinds of havoc and uh 
Danny Masterson, Masterson, I think is that how you say it, um, who just recently was convicted of rape and sent to prison, is in the movie. I think it might have been the only thing I've ever seen him in, so I thought that was kind of weird because he was in the news a lot and then uh, see him in a movie. And he doesn't have a very big part, but that was a little distracting. And I guess it's a bit of a um, romance. Anyway, I thought it was interesting. Not as good as Dracula Untold. And then I watched another film with Joe. He likes watching old movies. Like on Sunday, we will watch TCM movies. TCM is awesome and I love it, but they don't have a lot of horror. They're, they put the horror and the science fiction together, which is always like, ooh, horror is not necessarily considered classic, although it should, classic movies. Although in the month of October, and I'm hoping they'll do it this year, they usually add more horror, like, you know, Night of the Living Dead and, you know, old classic kind of horror films, Psycho. But this one was something, oh, they had a lot of one, uh, old films, old horror films that had to do with like bugs, like Mothra and this kind of stuff. And Joe hates anything with bugs. So we couldn't watch that. So I saw this one that was described it as something of a vampire film. So we watched it. It's called Isle of the Dead. It's a 1945 horror film directed by Mark Robson and made for RKO Pictures, starring uh, Boris Karloff. The film script was inspired by the painting Island of the Dead by Arnold Bachlin, which is interesting. The film was originally titled Camilla during production. It was actually very interesting and really well done. That's the thing when you watch old movies, old black and white films from the 30s or 40s, it's really, a, they're really focused on a tight story. That's one thing I've noticed that the difference between films, you know, in the last 40 years and films then. Now, a lot of times you don't have really good writing, but you have a lot of flash, you have a lot of fast action sequences, fast editing, great looking visuals. So you're kind of distracted and not really noticing that there's not much of a story going on. This story is really tight and, uh, and really good. It takes place during the Balkan Wars of 1912 and Boris Karloff plays this um, little hard ass general. And then he and an American reporter go to this island called Isle of the Dead, where there is a crypt and uh, the general's wife is buried there. And they discover that the, the grave has been desecrated and the body's gone. Well, while they're there, they meet the small group of people li living in this, you know, staying at this house and uh, the group of foreigners. And there is a plague that suddenly comes in and they can't leave. It's kind of like a being, you know, COVID-19 where everyone has to isolate and people start dying. There's also this older woman who's like an old, uh, you know, country woman who keeps calling the young beauty, uh, Vorvalica, I think is how it's pronounced, which is, a, I believe it's like a Greek uh, vampire myth. Like, why is everyone dying and you're staying young and fresh? And then the general starts to, who's this very um, by the book kind of guy who actually has his ch childhood friend killed because of, you know, he's just following orders in the army. And he then kind of is convinced that this young woman is also this vampire and he's kind of falling for her. So his, uh, all of his uh, logic and going by the book kind of goes out the window in the situation. And it has a really fun twist too. So this is a movie that you probably would never <laughs> watch in a million years, but if, if you ever see it on TV, check it out. It's, it's really good. And then what else? Um, ah, last night I watched a, a film that I really enjoyed. And that's John Carpenter's Vampires. I had seen this film back when it came out in the 1998. And I remember it being fun, but I had so much fun watching this film. It's so over the top, wonderful, 
and it's all because of James Woods. You know, I've always had a bit of a crush on James Woods, or, or let's say Batilda's <laughs> had a crush on James Woods because he's that kind of sleazy guy that, you know, you shouldn't like, but you do. Yeah, I get it. I definitely get it. I've always felt that way about him since, probably since I've seen him in like the onion field. And he's a really good actor. Like he commits completely to this role of this badass vampire slayer. James Wood plays um, Jack Crow, a leader of a team of vampire hunters. After his parents were murdered by vampires, Crow was raised by the Catholic Church to become their master slayer. So it gets into all this like Catholicism. Of course, I'm totally there. Uh, the plot is centered on Crow's efforts to prevent a centuries old cross from falling into the hands of Jan Valak, the first and most powerful of all vampires played by Thomas Ian Griffith. I thought he was a great vampire. He was kind of like what Vampire 2000 kind of was trying to be. But this guy, I thought, really had it. He had the look. He had the fearsome quality. He, he just was like appropriately cool and evil. And he made a great foil for James Wood's character. You know, like you, I couldn't wait to see those two square off. It also stars... Uh, Daniel Baldwin, I was looking at him and it's like, which Baldwin is that? I mean, there's like all these Baldwin actor brothers and I don't know if they grow them on a farm somewhere, but yeah, so this is Daniel Baldwin. They all have those beautiful blue eyes. As Tony Montoya, Crow's best friend and fellow hunter. So this is like a buddy film in a way. It's very macho. It's very politically incorrect on a lot of levels, but you know, sometimes that's very refreshing to watch. Uh, Cheryl Lee from Twin Peaks plays Katrina, a prostitute who has a psychic link to Valak after being bitten. And, uh, and, and oh, Maximilian Schell as Cardinal Alba. You know, I didn't know that's who that was, but I could tell that this was an actor that had like gravitas. So that was interesting. And Tim Guni as the fa father Adam. There's a lot of good characters in this movie. And it, it has definitely has like a Western feel. It takes place in New Mexico, I believe, in the desert. They're hunting these vampires. They have a, a unique way of killing them where they shoot them with a bayonet and then uh, use like a winch to drag them out into the sun. And I never got tired of seeing them do that. It was really, really great. This movie, whether you're into like this kind of macho type of... Uh, script. I mean, yeah, the, the one female character is, is a prostitute and James Wood is always like smacking her around and, uh, he tortures the priest. You know, he's just that kind of character. He wears this, uh, he's not a big guy, but he wears this like iconic, you know, leather jacket. Like I, I felt like his character was very well defined. I mean, if that doesn't offend you, <laughs> which I'm watching it, it doesn't offend me, but it might offend some people because it's very like brash but it's great, great entertainment. And I'm so glad I watched it. And it, it actually was one of those movies where I'm like, okay, I need to get, not only get the DVD, but I need to watch the sequels that were straight to video because uh, that was a great movie. So that's what I've been doing. That's what I've been watching. Let me know in the comments below if you have anything to say about any of the things I mentioned here today. I would love to hear your thoughts. So that's all I have for today, and I'll see you next time in my haunted library. Bye.